Hello, this is Michel Leviathan Sorbet and you are watching a new episode on the Vojevnik TV YouTube channel. Today I would like to invite you to look at a review of a game that I have played several months ago but I haven't prepared the review up, to, up until today. Now I would like to show you a game published in 2018 by Decision Games which is called Coronal and Falkland Islands. So it is a game which will cover two of the biggest battles of World War I, of course naval battles, uh, which had very different outcomes because in the first one, so in the Battle of Coronel, uh, the uh, von Spees German Admiral uh, squadron managed to defeat a British squadron Whereas during the Battle of the Falkland Islands, this very same uh, German squadron consisting of several warships was literally destroyed by another British force. So two very interesting battles uh, which happened in the early months of World War I. The game uh, was published uh, in a new system of games called Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagons and a few months ago I also showed you in Polish a review of the second title in the same system which concentrated on the battles of River Plate and Denmark's trade during the Second World War. So as you can see the system was designed in such a way that it can cover battles from different periods. That's a strong point of this system. The game was designed by to guys like Eric Harvey and Chris Perello. It is meant to be played by two players, but you can also play it solitaire because there are no hidden information in this title. You should also end the game in one up to two hours, but I believe that while knowing the rules, you can easily end the game in 45 minutes or so. Now, today I would like to show you what are the components of this game, then I would like to explain how the basic mechanisms of the game work, and finally I would like also to, uh, to share with you some of my thoughts about this game. So, let's take a look first at the components of Coronel and Falkland Islands. At first, as always, let's take a close look at all the components which will be used while playing Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagons, Coronel and Falklands. Now, the first and major element which we will be using is, of course, the game map. Now, this is a game map which depicts the ocean, so it has only water hexes, it has no islands, it has no coral reefs, it has just blue ocean hexes. Now each hex has its own number because in the scenarios we will sometimes receive information governing from which hexes certain forces will, will enter uh, the board. Uh, and the second thing that is uh, in, uh, enclosed in each hex is also a small white dot uh, which will be used in order to determine line of sight and distance. And that's it when it comes to the map. It's really a very simple map, but we shouldn't be really surprised. It's a naval game and the map depicts only water. The second type of elements that we receive in this game are, of course, counters. And we have two types of counters. First of all, unit counters, which will be, of course, vessels and then additional counters which will be markers used during gameplay. Now, uh, naval units look like this, so they have some parameters on them. The first one, which is in the upper left corner, is the gun rating, which will determine the number of dice used during attacks. The second number is the weight of fire, which will influence the number of damage which such a unit can uh, inflict to uh, to targets which it uh, which it successfully uh, bombarded uh, then we have also a mm, relatively high parameter this is the maximum range of each ship uh, the number inside this small shield is the structural integrity of each 
shape because each shape has a certain endurance. And then at the bottom of this unit, we also receive two additional parameters, maneuvering, maneuver rating, which will influence uh, the capability of a ship of making some maneuvers, and then the flank speed of a ship, so it's maximum speed at which it can, uh, it can move uh, during gameplay. Certain units also have an additional parameter which indicates that the uh, that the ship is able to launch torpedoes. It's the torpedo rating. Now certain ships are only uh, are only presented on one side of the counter. Others, uh, the bigger ones, the bigger ships have also a second step or a second side, where as you can see, certain parameters are reduced. So ships will take damage and while taking this damage, they will be flipped over to the reduced damaged side. Apart from those ship counters, we receive additional markers, which will be used during gameplay, for instance, smoke markers, uh, for instance, hit markers, evasive maneuvers uh, markers, Torpedo markers, which will be used in order to uh, to track the number of torpedo attacks that each ship can uh, can launch, and additional markers, for instance, hog dead in the water, or for instance, also uh, slowed markers, which will be used when ships take damage. An additional element which we receive in each and every opus of Dreadnoughts and battle wagons are, of course, the rules. Uh, the rules are governing, in general, the system. So we receive the core rules, which will be the same in each and every game of this series. The rules are really very short, really very simple, nicely written. I didn't have absolutely any doubts of about how to play this game after reading this rulebook only once. And even then, if I had some doubts, I could very easily find the information because those rules are just simple and very short. Uh, additionally, in each game of the Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagons uh, system, we receive uh, one sheet with additional rules governing the scenarios which are in each game. And in this case, it will be the special rules governing Coronel and the Falkland Islands scenario, Island scenarios. Additionally, apart some specific rules which will be applied during those scenarios, uh, rules governing who wins, who is how to win, who is the first player, how to set up the game, we receive also a game turn track on which we will be, uh, we will be counting the turns. Each game of Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagons and so Coronel and Falkland, Falkland Islands included uh, also will, and will necessitate us to use some dice. Those are not included in the game, but we will be needing at least a few of them because the mechanisms of this game are thought in such a way that we will be launching multiple dice in order to verify uh, the effect of some, uh, some different things, for instance, of attacks uh, during game. So we should, also, uh, we should also prepare some dice, which will be very often rolled during gameplay. Now, how this game works, what are its mechanisms, how to win, and how to set up the game, then how to play a turn. Let's check it out. As mentioned a few moments ago, each game published in the Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagon system comes with its own specific rules, exclusive rules. Those rules will describe how to prepare each scenario, what forces to use, how to set up the game, and what will be its length, and what will be the victory conditions. Uh, those victory conditions can depend on the situation and on the battle and uh, in, for instance, Coronel, the victory conditions will depend on the number of ships sunk. Uh, in the Falkland Islands, the Germans, for instance, can win by successfully escaping the British uh, by uh, leaving the map board. So those conditions can differ and can be very different. This, those specific rules will also include a game turn record track on which we will be placing our turn marker in order to track time. 
uh, this, uh, those two scenarios uh, can, um, can be played in 10 and 15 turns, but each turn will be really fast. How this game works, so how a classic turn of the system of Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagon system look like. Now, each turn will be divided into three phases. The first phase will be the combat phase, and this is something uncanny because in the majority of games, we first move our units, we first decide where to send them, and only at that point we launch attacks. Here, in Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagons, first there is combat, and then we have movement. So, how this combat works? First of all, in order to shoot at a target, our vessel has to, uh, has to see its target. And in order to, uh, to determine if uh, this condition is met, we verify each time the maximum, the maximum distance at which a ship can, uh, can launch an attack. This distance will be printed in the upper right corner of each counter. Uh, this distance also determines the, the maximum distance at which shot shots can be made. Uh, sometimes this distance will be even greater than the, than the maximum distance written in the rules, because the rules say that we can shoot at targets not farther than 18 hexes from our own vessel. In some cases, those units, especially in the Second World War scenarios, will have a longer, a longer range. But this range uh, is being written on the counters in order to also calculate the medium distance, because the distance will influence the number of dice rolled during combat. So, uh, as I said, to attack a ship, we have to see it, and it has to be in our artillery's range. Now, the distance is calculated really in a, uh, in a classical way, because we just draw a line between those two uh, hexes, and we verify if the distance counted in hexes is inferior or equal to the maximum range. If it is, this unit can be shot at. And after choosing such a target, we will determine the number of dice rolled. The number of dice rolled will be depending on different factors. And those factors will be, for instance, this, uh, the range, the speed of both the firing uh, ship and the uh, ship which we are firing at, uh, other modifications which will, for instance, uh, be related to evasive actions made by the target. Uh, smoke will also influence uh, the number of dice rolled because each ship, after moving, uh, after leaving a hex, can also leave a smoke marker on the map, and those smoke markers, smoke markers will reduce the number of dice rolled by ships firing uh, through a line containing such markers. Uh, each ship has its own fire factor, which is the basic number of dice used during artillery attacks. This number is then modified using the table that I have shown you a few moments earlier. At the end, we calculate a certain number of dice. If this number is negative or equal to zero, the attack cannot be made. So we can see the target, but because of some conditions, we cannot shoot at it. If the result is one or more, we obtain a certain, certain number of dice and we just roll them. In order to score a hit, we have to obtain a six or a five. If we do, we have a chance of damaging the target. So, uh, shooting at a target and obtaining hits is not equal to damaging the ship because, me, because uh, some ships are harder to be damaged. And at that point, we compare two factors. We compare the weight of fire, which is uh, the power of our artillery, and the structural integrity of the target. Uh, and we have different, uh, different conclusions. If 
the comparison shows us that the difference is smaller than minus two, there is absolutely no effect. So while shooting with units with a small weight of fire against heavily armored units, we really sometimes have no chance of damaging such units. But if this difference is a little bit smaller, uh, if it is minus one, we already have a small chance. For each hit scored, we roll a die. And in order to damage the target, we have to roll a six. If we do, the target receives a hit marker, which is placed underneath the vessel. If the number of hit markers is superior to the structural integrity of the target, the target is heavily damaged and switched to its reduced side. Again, if a number of hits during over attacks during, uh, during other um, artillery fire is superior to the new structural integrity, the target is immediately destroyed. If the comparison between the weight of fire and the structural integrity comes to, brings us a result of zero or one, we also roll a die. And again, we score hits at a six, but also at a five. The five is a normal damage. The six is a, uh, is a critical damage. If we obtain such a result, we will use the critical hit table and we will roll another die. Uh, if the result was, uh, if the comparison of the weight of fire and the structural integrity of the target was zero or one, the roll on this table will be uh, modified by a minus two. So we won't be able to immediately sunk the target because the six is catastrophic damage is the most dangerous result that a ship can obtain. Uh, we will receive something else. For instance, we can damage the steering or we can uh, cause a fire on board. If the comparison between the weight of fire and the structural integrity is a result of two or more, uh, we also launch the dice, roll the dice, a five is a normal hit, a six is again a roll on the critical hit table, but this time without any modifier. So we can also obtain a five or six, we can cause a target uh, to become a ship dead in the water, or we can cause catastrophic damage, which results in an, ex an immediate explosion of the target, regardless of the number of hits obtained so far. Uh, so, the ships will attack one another in such a way. Uh, what is also important is that uh, fire is supposed to be simultaneous, uh, but the order in which those ships will be activated in order to choose the targets and to fire is uh, a thing depending on the decision of the first player. The first player is always determined in the scenario description and he is the first player for the entire game. He chooses which ship shoots at what moment and uh, then both sides will alternating uh, turns taking their, uh, will be taking shots alternating their turns. After concluding each, uh, each possible shot, which includes also torpedo attacks, which work pretty much the same way with the difference that the range is different, we also use some different modifiers, we pass on to the movement phase. Now movement is also very simple because we use the movement factor of each ship in order to determine its, its maximum speed called the flank speed. Uh, Moving with a flank speed will uh, will cause some modifiers while uh, the ship is being shot at or while the ship shoots. Uh, as you might expect, if uh, a ship is moving at flank speed, it is more difficult to be hit, but it is also uh, less effective during attacks. A ship moving at an inferior speed of its flank speed uses a smaller factor. It can also just move one hex to another using cruise speed. Uh, while, while moving onto a hex, a ship can also make a turn and leaving a hex also enables it to place a smoke marker, which 
as, uh, as it has been said earlier, it will reduce the number of dice used during attacks if the line of sight passes through such a hex. After removing each ship, uh, again, alterna again alternating turns, uh, we pass on to the administrative phase in which we will verify if the smoke markers remained on the board of or if they dissipate uh, and we also uh, begin a new turn. So the game is really pretty simple when it comes to the mechanisms. This also influences the time of play. Uh, so it is a really fast and easy to learn game. There are of course some little uh, tweaks, there are some little additional rules governing for instance ships in the water, hogs, evasive maneuvers, but they are also very simple and very clearly written in the rules. Now let's pass on to a summary. I would like to tell you what I think about this game, uh, how I uh, find it and how I played it, so if I enjoyed it, if I think it's a fine game. Coronel and Falkland Islands is a part of a bigger family, and this family is called Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagons. Now, the system was meant to be very easy to learn, very quick to play, and historically accurate. So now I would like to give my opinion on all of those three aspects, which are underlined by Decision Games on the game cover. Now, firstly, minutes to learn. Is it really true? I would say absolutely yes. This is a game which is very easy to learn, which is very easy to set, which is very easy to play, because the mechanisms of this game are very straightforward. You shoot at your opponent, you move your vessels, and that's pretty it. You don't have additional rules governing armor, you do not have additional rules governing rate of fire, governing your different types of artillery, radio communication, etc, etc. It's totally absent from this system. So, the system, I would say, is very simplistic. It was meant to be simple and it is absolutely true that it takes minutes to learn the game. Now, having said that, I believe that the rules are a little bit too simple because uh, I understand that the system was meant to be very straightforward uh, and the rules themselves, the core rules, were written in such a way that it's very easy to understand them. And in my opinion, it's a strong point of this game. But at the same time, I would say that a weaker point of this game are the specific rules, the additional rules governing each scenario. So, the game was meant to be historically accurate. Is it really historically accurate? Well, I would say yes and no. Yes, because you do receive all the vessels that took part in those battles. Yes, because you receive some very simple additional rules which will change each scenario. But at the same time, those rules are so simple and there are so few of them that I personally had the feeling that something was lacking in the game. I wanted more chrome, I wanted more additional rules. Those battles, Coronel and the Falkland Islands, were totally different. And there were so many things happening during those battles. I think that it would be a good idea to include additional rules which would enable to differentiate those battles one for one from another. Uh, the core rules are simple, they should be simple, so that's a thumb up. The additional rules should add more chrome. In my opinion, we have a failure in this section. The third part, quick to play, I already said. It's a game which is really very quick to play. It's a strong point of this game. It's a strong point of this system. You do not have a lot of counters which you will be using during gameplay. You will only track speed, sometimes you will track damage, you will track evasive maneuvers, you will track smoke, and that's pretty it. There are some naval games or even land battle games in which we are stacking tons of counters where we are, where we are playing accountants. Here it's not the case, and I believe that's very pleasant to, uh, to 
play, it is pleasant to use and it is also very easy to reset the game and to replay a battle. So those are the strong points of this game. I think that a major strong point of not only Coronel, but also, for instance, of River Plate and Dermal Strike, in general, of the battle wagons, of the Dreadnoughts and Battle Wagon system, is the fact that it's a very smooth system. It's a smooth, which it's a system which will suit a few historical periods. So it's a, an universal system which will, which could be used to cover battles from different conflicts. And that's a very good thing, because you can grab a game, you can rapidly browse through the core rules in order to, to refresh uh, your knowledge of the system, then you, can take, then you can take the specific rules, the additional rules, and you can play the game directly from the, uh, from the bag. So that's a good thing, because it enables decision games to really make the copy and paste uh, procedure in order to produce additional games. I think it's good because if people tend to like the system, they will grab additional titles and they will not be, um, they will not know, not have to, they will not have to read through long rule books in order to play a new game. They will just set the game and rapidly start playing. Having said that, I believe that in this procedure copy paste there should be also a third element copy upgrade paste and if decision games decides to do so i believe that this system can be a real hit i believe more chrome would be beneficial to this line this was coronal and the falkland islands from decision games thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it I also invite you to verify our other materials. We have some reviews, top 10, some unboxings. I wish you a great week, have a great day also, and see you next time.